So let's talk a little bit about the first pleiotropy robust method, and it's called MR Egger regression. So MR Egger regression is useful in two respects. The first is that it can identify the presence of what's called directional pleiotropy in our data. So by directional pleiotropy, I mean horizontal pleiotropy that biases the IV estimate from the analysis. It's possible to have horizontal pleiotropy in your data set where the different pleiotropic SNPs um, cancel each other out. So your overall estimate um, is actually unbiased. That would be non-directional pleiotropy. So MR Egger regression is useful from the perspective of identifying directional pleiotropy in your data set. It also provides a less biased estimate of the causal effect in the presence of pleiotropy. The disadvantage though, is that MR Egger lacks power. So MR Egger relies on something called the inside assumption. So inside stands for instrument strength is independent of direct effect. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the instrument strength, so that's gamma in this particular uh, DAG, is independent of the direct effect alpha. So what that means is that if you created a table across the different SNPs and you uh, listed the instrument strength gamma and the direct effect alpha in two different columns, then the correlation between those two terms across SNPs would be zero. So how likely is inside likely um, to be held in practice? Well, perhaps not all that often. So for example, it's reasonable to expect that a SNP that is, let's say, a, a missense SNP, not only has a large direct, um, a large effect on the exposure of interest, but it might probably also have a large pleiotropic effect um, on the outcome as well. So perhaps inside um, is uh, an assumption which may not always be held um, in practice. It is, however, a less strict assumption, obviously, than there being absolutely no horizontal pleiotropy in the data set. So how does MR Egger work? Well, basically what we do is we perform a regression of all the SNP outcome association effects on the SNP exposure association effects. So just like uh, how we did in inverse variance weighted meta-analysis, um, except this time our weighted regression um, is not constrained to have an incept, intercept of zero, a y-intercept of zero, but that y-intercept is allowed to uh, be estimated freely. And so it turns out that if the inside assumption is satisfied, then the slope of that weighted regression is equal to the causal effect of the exposure on the outcome. So the slope is our causal effect estimate um, and we can test for significant, um, whether that slope significantly differs from zero. The other thing we can do is we can test the significance of the intercept term. So this is a test for whether there is directional pleiotropy in our data set. 
So let's look at some empirical examples. So here's one example of height and lung function. So this is an example of two traits where there most definitely is a causal relationship. Height causes lung function. So by definition, people who are taller have bigger lungs and therefore height is causal for um, measures of uh, lung function. So when we perform inverse variance weighted meta-analysis and Egger regression on the data, we get very similar estimates of the causal effect of height on lung function, uh, both significantly different from zero, indicating there is a significant causal effect. And interestingly, the y-intercept of, of the Egger regression is almost on zero. Um, and a test for whether we can constrain that to zero yields a non-significant result. A useful diagnostic when performing MR Egger regression is something called a funnel plot. So this is where we plot the instrument strength on the y-axis against our estimates of the causal effect on the x-axis. And if there's no directional pleiotropy in our data, the plot should have a nice inverted funnel shape. The funnel shape is a consequence of the fact that instruments that are stronger should have more precise uh, estimates of the causal effect, and so not much variability about the x-axis, whereas instruments that are weaker should vary wider. The fact that this is nice and symmetrical is a good visual indicator that there's not a lot of horizontal pleiotropy influencing the results in this particular example. Let's look at another example now. This is blood pressure and coronary heart disease. So this time, the inverse variance weighted Mendelian randomization and the Egger regression results look quite different in terms of their results, both in the case of systolic blood pressure, but also for diastolic blood pressure as well. So whilst the inverse weighted uh, results are strongly significant, the Egger results are not. Now that's perhaps not surprising given that Egger has much less power than IVW. But what is concerning is that the uh, beta coefficients are quite different. So that should be a, an immediate orange flag to you. Um, in terms of testing for directional pleiotropy, um, we have one non-significant result and one um, getting toward nominally significant result. Um, again, this test for directional pleiotropy tends to, to lack power. Um, so the uh, absence of an effect we perhaps shouldn't take too seriously. Um, the fact that this is floating around the 0.05 level, um, again, should be an orange flag. And interestingly, when we look at the funnel plot results, um, they look very different to what we had before. So instead of having that nice funnel shape with the height and lung function example, now um, there's very much a skew on these funnel plots. So this is a, a visual indicator um, of um, potential horizontal pleiotropy, this, this visual evidence for asymmetry. So this is telling you um, that uh, pleiotropy may be an issue in your data set um, and the results should be treated with caution.